information with us. We're happy to see so many people from all over the world. And I'd like to begin by asking all the hosts to introduce themselves. So my name is Lindsay Kirkland. I'm the Climate Change Education Manager at Climate Generation. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Megan Van Loeb, and I am the Senior Education Coordinator. Hey, everyone. I'm Kristen Poppleton, and I'm the Senior Director of Programs. And we're super excited to have you all here from all over the world here today. Yeah, great. Thank you. Um, Myself and Megan are going to be your host today, and Kristen is going to be supporting us by monitoring the chat box and supporting you with technical issues. So in your chat box, you can hit um, highlight your responses to go to all panelists, or you can even select Kristen personally to send her a private chat with technical issues. I want to introduce, introduce you to Climate Generation. We're a nonprofit organization that empowers and engages the public in climate change solutions. We work with the youth, educators, and communities to provide opportunities for climate change conversations, community, community building, and education. Our education team that you see here today provide professional development, opportunities for virtual and in-person presentations, and workshops for teachers and students. So um, we'll share a link to our annual report if you want to learn more about our organization. And Kristen will be sharing these links in the chat box. Great. Before we begin, I wanna go over some of the features we'll be using in Zoom today. So you can take this time to browse those features as I talk through them. So we already mentioned there's a toolbar at the bottom of Zoom, it should be underneath your video feed. And there um, you can find your mute options, your video options. And there are also options for Q&A which is a platform for asking questions and getting them answered. If you put a question in there, we will answer it at the end of the webinar today. We also have the chat box where you can write in questions or answers to our prompts that we'll be giving today. And we'll also be sharing all of the links to resources in there. And as we go through our webinar today, we just ask that you watch out for poll questions we're going to be asking along the way. So, this webinar is for you, but it's also for us because we're in such a time of flux and transition that we would like to have more information about your needs. And we're gonna use these poll questions to develop our program today. Great, so if you have any questions about those features, you can um, create a text directly to Kristen in the chat box. And if you have any more tips or things that might be useful, you can write them in the chat box as well. So I would also like to acknowledge why we're here on Zoom today, which of course is COVID-19. So because of COVID-19, we're not only rethinking education, but we're also rethinking how we as a community respond to existential threats. And we often in this community talk about climate change. So Megan, if you could share us a, um, our slides. Yep. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. So now everyone should be seeing a slide. So in the climate change education community, there have been recent discussions about the links between reducing greenhouse gas emissions and social isolation. Here at Climate Generation, we wanna be sensitive about celebrating those observations, like you see here with a reduction in um, NO2 above China because they are actually coming at the cost and loss of people and community. And we just wanna be sensitive to all marginalized communities that might be impacted by COVID-19. At this time, we believe that the link between climate change and the recent pandemic is best addressed by thinking about reshaping our responses to global crises, connecting to our communities and supporting those in need. So we're creating a toolkit to help you discuss COVID-19 climate change connections. And Kristen will share a link to that in our chat box. And this is an ongoing conversation about these connections. And we urge you to share resources with us if you'd like to in the chat. But you can also regularly link to this working doc uh, in the future as these conversations evolve. Great. So regarding our response to COVID-19, we urge you to take the advice of our founder, Will Steger. 
here in this infographic that was graciously made by Lisa Troutman today. And we urge you to take care of your body, your mind, and each other in this time of transition. Great. Megan, if you'd like to stop sharing the slides, we can finish our intro. Thank you. So everything in our presentation today in this webinar will be outlined in a blog and the recording will be on a, hosted on our YouTube page and we'll share the blog link and the YouTube page link now. Thanks, Kristen. If you're watching from YouTube, the blog will be linked in the description under the YouTube video. And anything that we don't address in this web webinar today will be linked in our blog. So for example, if you're looking for simulations about chemistry or physics, virtual science labs, or geoscience resources, all of those very specific links are in our blog. So to wrap up this intro, um, I wanna recognize that across the nation, we're faced with challenges, especially as educators of delivering quality virtual and distance education to our students. We know that some educators are in districts or schools that have limited digital access and they're having to make different decisions than those with access to internet. We acknowledge that each situation is different and we're here to support you in whatever you need. We hope that today we can give you resources, connections, and tips to new ways of learning and teaching. Great. So we'll make a transition um, here into our tips section of this webinar by using a poll. Great, so if you can answer this poll, where are you in your transition to digital or distance learning? Okay, and Kristen, oh, I guess we, I can see the attendees now. So we have 71, so we're at 25 out of 71. I'll give it a couple more seconds here while people are answering and then I'll share the results with y'all. Thanks for giving us your feedback. We still have a few more to go. All right, 70% of you have answered and I'm gonna go ahead and share the results. Thank you. Great. Okay, so it looks like we have people from all over the board here. So some are still planning and looking for digital platforms. Most it looks like have a digital platform and are looking for activities. And then I imagine we have some um, nonprofit organizations or government organizations that are looking for ways to support educators as well. Thanks for those answers. So Megan, if you would like to share our tips again, thank you. So prior to this presentation and prior to being able to um, talk to you today about your needs, I chose a few tips that I thought might be useful for everyone. So one, um, if, you have, if you haven't been um, able to or given a virtual platform for, from your school or place of work, it's important to pick something uh, that's used, usable by your students, of course. Um, and one that not all of them actually have the option for in-person conferences, so like Zoom. So you want to pick a virtual complementary platform for your classroom platform. So that might look like you're using Google Classroom and using Google Hangouts together. And there are a few opportunities that have come up re in recent days from the private sector and offering these programs. So Microsoft Teams is now available for free to all educators. So Kristen, if you can share that link in the chat. And also Zoom is offering free accounts for all K-12 schools. And Kristen, if you can share that link as well. And once you have found your platforms, or those of you who have already found ways of engaging with students online, we urge you to actually take a formal training in that platform because there are so many features, like Zoom's features today, that you can use and you might not be aware of. So some of those might be virtual blackboards or breakout rooms where you can actually sort students into smaller groups. And of course, chats, Q and A's, and polls. Great. 
So we actually have another poll for you today before we get into our resources. And Kristen, if you can share that poll. Thank you. So we'd like to ask you um, to highlight what subject area you teach and indicate if you're currently teaching about climate change. And then Megan's going to lead the way in our resources. Answers are coming in. We'll give it a few more seconds. Looks like people are figuring out how to use this too. We had some questions, but good job. All right. <laughs> All right, so results are in. We have, what subject area do you teach? Looks like the majority of you are from STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, good to see the humanities represented. Um, and then obviously there's way more other subject areas and non-formal folks, so. Um, and then do you currently teach about climate change? Looks like about almost 80% of you do and 20% are probably looking for ways that you can. So that's good to see. All right. So um, we wanted to take this time to share um, and highlight just a few resources from Climate Generation and Partner um resources that we find are really good for adapting to virtual and distance learning um, this is really just a a snapshot it's not going to be a comprehensive list like lindsay said we do have a blog that lists um, even more resources and links to all of them and then i do encourage you all just to check out our website at climategen.org and um, you can really just jump around um, dig into um, the resources and things we have to offer. And just feel free to give us an email um, if you have questions or want further instruction. Um, but all of these resources we will be sharing with you um, in a follow-up email as well. So high level, I just wanted to say that um, at Climate Generation, we continue to offer our curricula and resources for free. Um, here's kind of the curriculum suite that we have. You can find them all on our website and download them in PDFs and just kind of get looking through the lessons and activities that we have in there. Um, I'll be pulling some specific resources and activities out of these. Um, but some of you maybe have seen these before. If not, um, go ahead and take a look and just see what might be relevant at this time. Um, I also wanted to mention our Summer Institute. Um, it's happening this July. Um, we do have a plan to go virtual if we need to because of COVID. Um, so just check into this, these dates and see if that might work for you. Um, and we have scholarships available as well. So we'll be doing um, training on, you know, just incorporating climate change into any subject area. So again, um, social studies, ELA, and science teachers. And then if you're looking for something um, virtual during this time, we have had this Standing Teach Climate Network and um, we're gonna continue to do this as well. So every month we virtually hang out with teachers from across the country and anyone can join as well, even if you're not a teacher. Um, and we just kind of pick a book or a topic and um, hang out and chat and have a good time. And then um, if you wanna be part of the network as well, we can send you our educator newsletter to stay up to date on what we have going on. All right, so I'm gonna jump here now into a few of the specific resources um, that we wanted just to share with you all today. And Kristen will be putting some of the links in the chat box as well where you can find them. So the first resource we picked was a video, right? Because videos, uh, can happen virtually. Um, so this one is the Green Careers for a Changing Climate. This is a 10-minute documentary 
and discussion guide um, that we have available free to download. Um, this really has students um, understand what careers can be solutions to climate change. So thinking about um, also what students' skills are, what they're good at or what they enjoy doing and thinking about how that translates into a career. Um, and this one has interviews with professionals in kind of the environmental field, what we mean with green. Um, and we also have a curriculum that is being written right now um, that's going to expand this resource. So if you're a teacher right now interested in getting um, actually piloting a lesson from this curriculum, the person who is writing it, Jenna Tots, is interested in having teachers um, just do kind of like a trial run. So feel free to shoot us an email to get your hands on one of the new lessons from that. But right now the actual documentary and discussion guide are available for you to use. Another resource um, using ArcGIS actually in a story map form, um, back in March of 2018, Will Steger, who is our founder, um, went on a solo expedition up in Canada and we followed him. Um, he sent back daily dispatches and journal entries and basically marked on the map where he um, made progress via cross country skiing and canoeing. Um, and the ice broke out. So we think this is just a really good virtual um, lesson because students could do this individually, listening to the dispatches, maybe journaling a little bit of their own, checking out the map, or even having a large group sharing um, this virtual resource that's just in our browser right there um, that you can access anytime. And then to highlight a few partners, um, the Zen Education Project, some of you may be familiar with this. You can check it, them out at zenedproject.org. They really bring attention to social justice issues. Um, you can see here teaching people's history. They also incorporate a lot of climate justice and climate change work um, in basically incorporating that into social studies and literature. Um, so, you know, just understanding that climate change is a human issue. Um, it is all about equity and privilege and power. Um, so they have a few role-playing exercises that we have found to be really impactful. One is called the Climate Mixer. So if you wanna check out the Climate Mixer through Zinn, um, you could do that virtually. If you're able to use Zoom, there's um, breakout room capabilities, or you could send, um, the students to read about the people who they're role-playing, maybe have them journal on it or have conversations um, or interview each other, um, different ways to kind of think about how that can be adapted virtually. And then um, another partner resource that is good for social studies is Climate Interactive. Um, they have a lot of role-playing and simulation um, activities. The one that we enjoy doing is called the World Climate Simulation, and that actually just has um, students model the United Nations um, Conference of ne Negotiations, um, the COP, basically, conferences, and students are um, playing the roles of different countries and trying to keep CO2 levels down. Um, and you should check actually with Climate Interactive with their new webinars where they're gonna actually help everyone turn to virtual, knowing that it is a good way to, to do simulations um, virtually and online. All right. So thinking as well that climate change is interdisciplinary, can be in social studies, can also be in um, English language arts or literature or classes where um, you're writing or different things like that. And we really see um, the power of story, the power of personal story um, within climate change education. So we know that it is a human issue and connecting and learning about the ways that people are experiencing the impacts really is a way for students to connect um, 
more than just data or graphs. And then also thinking about your own personal climate story as a teacher or as a you know, community supporter or as a student, um, we find is very important. So a few resources we have to support that learning is, one of them is this um, documentary here, Minnesota Stories in a Changing Climate. This one is actually 60 minutes and um, it interviews different people um, around Minnesota and their stories and then has kind of the climate experts throwing in uh, information and facts on that as well. Um, even if you're not from Minnesota, we find this is a really good resource that just, you know, translates. We all could identify with someone in this, in this film. Um, so you can view it in clips um, on our website. We also have a full documentary that is linked there and we have a discussion guide as well. And then once you've watched uh, other folks' stories, we also have um, a workshop and a lesson to help you discover your own climate stories. Um, so at Climate Generation, we've been coaching people to discover their personal connections to climate change and share them. And so we actually have, this is a snapshot of a YouTube video of a storytelling webinar or what workshop basically that you could use and play to your class or to yourself to help you um, think of your climate story. So it's, it, it basically gives you prompts that um, invite reflection and writing and then also shares examples of climate stories. So you could sit through the 50 minute workshop itself or we also have a lesson for educators fully written out that you could do yourself um, if you prefer. Or we actually just even have a web page on our, our website that has the prompts listed out there too. So multiple ways to do it if you're interested in kind of thinking of your personal connections. Um, we also know that literature and books, like I've been saying, are really important to kind of have people, you know, just have climate become more relevant um, more personable in their lives. And so we have a reading guide that has a list of um, climate fiction or cli-fi books as well as nonfiction. So this is a list of the books that we have currently that are fiction in this reading guide. And um, we know that it's hard to get to libraries right now and most libraries are closed, but most are, if you have a card to your library, you can get an ebook. Um, so that would be a way to maybe share um, the literature with students or for yourself at the moment. Um, otherwise, if you have the book, we encourage you to read it aloud and record it and share it with your students. I'm sure some maybe already are doing that. I've seen even like celebrities doing that, uh, recording themselves reading a book and sharing. So I think that's a fun way to um, you could also reach out to your media specialists or librarians in your community and see if they might want to do a read aloud or something like that. And then to highlight a partner resource, um, in St. Paul, their um, library program is the entire year is um, focusing on climate change. It's called Read Brave. And they've really taken um, this as a whole citywide approach to getting the community involved. And you can go to their website and check out a way more extensive list um, beyond the ones that we have in our reading guide. And it's really for all, all ages. We have you know, children's books all the way up to adults, dystopian, utopian, um, all those kinds of things. So check out their list if you need some inspiration. Um, right now, if folks would like to, in the chat box, um, if you have access to it, go ahead and maybe share um, a story or a book or something that you have read that you find really interesting and think you should be recommended for other folks to read. Yeah, Megan, just to comment on what people are 
um, suggesting here, of course, we just read The Marrow Thieves by Cherie Demelin for the Teach Climate Network, but we also have Ivy and Bean for K-5 kids, Shitbreaker for maybe middle schoolers and high schoolers, The Big Melt book. Uh, and it looks like um, suggestions are slowing down a bit. Awesome, great. Okay, and then our next um, kind of section I wanted to share for science teachers, but knowing that this is also for whatever uh, subject you teach could be integrated in, is our next generation climate curriculum. So this again is free to download in PDF. Um, but what is also good about it at the moment is that we have um, on the web page itself for this curriculum, all of the links to the worksheets as well as the graphs are fully laid out on the browser. So that's actually a way that students can access the worksheets and the things to follow along with you as the educator having the actual PDF of the curriculum. So it's basically set up for you and actually we're hoping to do a webinar specifically on this curriculum and how to adapt it for virtual learning um, at the beginning of April. So stay tuned for that. Um, but I know some folks are asking for data and more of, you know, how do we um, have the lessons that actually show that climate change is happening and it's caused by humans and how we know that. This is the curriculum that will do that. So it's a lot of interpreting graphs, um, finding the evidence, making claims from those um, evidence so um, and there's also videos and things that support the learning as well so check that one out and this is just one uh, of the graphs from the first lesson so showing the global temperature anomalies since 1880 and actually students will get sections of this graph um, and have to you know ask critical questions, um, make some inquiries on it, and then come together as a group and seeing that it actually makes a full graph and what that means for looking at how our temperatures continue to increase. So a little snapshot of that. And then I also wanted to highlight um, Minnesota's changing climate curriculum. Uh, knowing that we're all kind of stuck at home right now, and if it's possible to have access to the outdoors, um, maybe just in your yard, or if you know students can't get outside looking out the window, um, really thinking about how you can have journaling and observations, possibly even thinking of it making a broader phenology project. So knowing that we're here in Minnesota experiencing signs of spring, uh, maybe you're already past that, but just, um, you know, getting students to really connect with the natural world. We know that's really healthy, especially at a time like this. Um, and we also have this short URL here is uh, climatejohn.org slash MCC is actually a link to uh, basically virtual field trip that you can take through uh, Minnesota's biomes. So um, if you're unable to get outside or if you want to see a different part of the country or a different part of the world, if you're not from Minnesota, um, it shows kind of the plants and animals and the biomes itself. Good field trip to do from your seat. <laughs> and then a few partner um, resources as well. So. The Alliance for Climate Education has a really great video series in Our Climate, Our Future that shows the science of climate change um, through videos and then also empowers students to take action. So that's a really good resource to check out if you're looking for some videos. Um, we also have the National Climate Assessment, the most recent one they created. They do it every four years. It was in 2018 um, and it's a really beautiful, uh, friendly website to check out the, the impacts that we're experiencing here in the U.S. because of climate change. Um, so check that out. And then through NOAA, um, they have Climate at a Glance, which provides a bunch of data, uh, meteorological data on every scale, 
um, and global data um, and historical perspective on the trends that we've seen and then how they're changing because of climate. So if you're looking for data, that uh, NOAA link is a good one. And then further data <laughs> we wanted to share um, through the University of Colorado Boulder, they have this whole entire like Google spreadsheet of all of these links to places where you can find data um, and even lab specific data for physics, chemistry, and biology um, and a big library of resources. So um, we'll put a link to that spreadsheet as well and have at it. All right, so that is the snapshot of the highlighting of the resources that we have for you today. Obviously, this is just the, the tip of it all, but knowing that um, you know there's a lot more out there um, and that we can you know be here for support for you continued along this journey that we're all in together. So I'll turn it over to Lindsay. Great. Thanks, Megan. It was so fun to watch the chat as you were going through all the resources. People were sharing other resources. Uh, educators were sharing their tips for how they incorporate our resources into their existing classrooms oh, nice. and other educators that are new to this were asking a lot of questions that were getting answered. So just if you're unfamiliar with Zoom, this chat box can't, you can just cut and paste from it. So you can actually take everything that's in there and just put it into a Word document and share it, um, keep it or share it with your colleagues. So to move into our support section, we want to offer another poll out to you guys. So Kristen, if you have a, a moment to separate yourself from the chat, can you do the next poll? So we wanna know what type of support would be helpful moving forward. And you can answer more than one here. Um, hopefully, if you can't access the poll or see it for some reason, some folks are having an issue, you can always write your answers to this question into the chat. So again, it's what type of support would be helpful moving forward? And your options are more webinars, interactive meetings, showing how to adapt curricula, one-on-one -on -one support, opportunities to connect to other educators, or facilitated lessons for your students. You can check more than one box. <laughs> And Kristen, I'll just let you decide when you think all the answers are in. Great, okay, so looks like people are interested in a lot of things, um, but primarily 70% of you are interested in facilitated and virtual lessons for students, which Megan and I are happy to offer, and we're happy to talk one-on-one -on -one with you about what your needs are and we can create something and help you create um, an interactive lesson. Also, we have another webinar um, coming up that we'll talk about in a little bit. And we um, are in the process of creating and adapting curricula that we already have to be virtual or even to be distance. So folks that don't have access to the internet, we wanna make sure they're included and we want to give them ideas of how to do this. So Megan, if you want to change to the next slide. Thank you. This is just a reminder, we are available for virtual meetings, presentations, and informal workshops. You can reach us at education at climategen.org. And if there is one thing that you feel like you need more of right now, I suggest that you just put it in the chat box um, and we can try to incorporate that into our plans for the future. So some future opportunities that are coming up is we have another webinar that Megan and I will host and we're going to adapt next generation climate curriculum into a remote learning. We chose to use the word remote because we're going to try to come up with methods for distance, so non-internet based education and virtual. Uh, and that's going to be on Wednesday, April 8th at 12 p.m. Central Time. And then Climate Generation is publishing a book and it's called Eyewitness. So uh, it is a collection of stories, so personal narratives, short stories, poems, and art about people's eyewitness accounts of climate change in their life. And our communica 
community engagement team is hosting a virtual story slam that you can access probably from your classroom or have your students access from their homes. And that will be on Earth Day, April 22nd, 11 a.m. And if you want more resource or to figure out how to join that, um, we will be sharing that information in our newsletters. So we encourage you to sign up for our newsletters and we'll, we'll share a link so that you can sign up for those. Kristen, if you don't mind doing that. Um, oh yeah, and we're, we will share the registrations for the webinars when, they're, when they are in Zoom. We actually don't have a registration up yet. Great. And so the different ways you can engage with us after this, I'd like to go over those. Megan, if you wanna change, thanks. Um, so this webinar will be hosted on our YouTube page. And we also are becoming more active on our Facebook and Twitter accounts. So I urge you to follow those if you're looking for more events or support in the future. And if you are looking for any specific resources that you'd like us to email to you that's not in this webinar, you can um, put that in the chat box as well. So everything in this email, and I think we'll probably consolidate a list of resources that have been shared in the chat into a follow-up email from this webinar because there are a lot of great, th great things that other people have been working on and sharing with us. Great, so we wanted to end the day uh, taking some time to answer these questions. So you can either put them into Q&A or put them into the chat. And I, I hope that Kristen had time to kind of see what the major trends were in questions and she can help us figure out how to tackle them. Yeah, I'm just kind of pulling together a few themes that I saw. So there's a couple of things that I saw people asking about. First of all, thank you so much for sticking with us. It was really fun to have you here. Uh, let me say thanks first. Um, a couple of things that were coming through. I know there was a number of elementary teachers that were on here. Um, and uh, and um, our resources are geared um, for climate change from that perspective. Uh, I would say middle school through high school, this is a pretty deliberate focus just on where climate change comes up in standards and where the complexity of an issue like this really is appropriate to, to talk about in the classroom. That said, we have always said that every single teacher should be able to answer questions about climate change because as you know, your kindergartners, if you're teaching kindergarten, know the words climate change, they're hearing about it. And so, um, this is definitely something we can look into doing a webinar on um, elementary level climate change and how you actually, what are the things that you can be doing to get students um, thinking about uh, getting ready to talk about climate change and also just to like take care of the planet and make observations of weather, et cetera, et cetera. So stay tuned on that. Um, our, uh, we do have grades three through six resources and um, and those are available and we'll make sure in the follow-up email that we identify these are our resources that we've geared more toward three through six. So that was one of the themes that was coming out in questions. Um, there were a couple of um, questions about more resources for on um, social justice and um, making that connection and um, besides the is an education project. Um, we have a, a handful of those. That's something that I think also I'll, I don't have time to dig super into right now, but we will follow up in the email on and also think about um, how we might be able to, to do um, some focused um, sharing on that, because I think that that issue is especially important and deserves um, focused attention. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, so getting more into the solutions focus and what students can be doing about climate change. Um, our, uh, our work at Climate Generation supports teachers, but we also have a very robust network of youth activists throughout the state of Minnesota. Um, and, um, and I think that there is opportunity to probably be sharing some of the things that are happening in their realm as well, and how student activists are thinking about organizing in this time um, when they can't actually get out in the streets. Um, and so uh, we'll be sure to share some information on that. I know that there is a lot of work going on with um, in that department. It isn't where we work as much in the K-12 realm. And so we'll be sure to include some of that um, in our follow-up as well. Um, 
we do have a toolkit for um, getting students engaged in doing school level school board resolutions and things like that, which is definitely something students could be thinking about right now, but um, we'll be sure to follow up on that. Um, and otherwise, those were kind of the big themes I saw materializing in the chat box with questions. One question that came up early on when we were talking about the Teach Climate Network was, how do I know when and where and how to engage with that? So you can join the Teach Climate Network um, on the link by the link that we put into the chat box. And what that does is, is every month we update it with the current theme and reading and then provide a Zoom link to the for the meeting. So that's how you can engage with that community. And then you can also join an e-newsletter that specifically goes to the Teach Climate Network group and you get alerts and additional support from us in terms of like current news. But also we have an ambassador program so you can actually be trained in our climate change education programs and help us uh, give presentations to communities in your area. Great. Yeah. Megan, did you have a chance or have anything else that you wanted to say today? Yeah, I was kind of looking through the chat now. Um, no, I think that's all good. I think just the sentiment that um, whatever you're doing, just keep it up. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is a difficult time for everyone, for parents and students and teachers and community members. So we're just trying to give you a little bit of a snapshot of what we have, but knowing that we are here to support you. So do not hesitate to shoot us an email. We've been using Zoom for quite a while. So even if it's what you think might be silly questions about tech support or things, we can even help you out with that, so. Great, thanks. And just to reiterate before we leave today, all of the links uh, are, that we've talked about today are the resources and the links that are associated with those resources are highlighted in the blog that we wrote for you. But also I think what we can do is consolidate the resources that have been offered by attendees into our follow-up email. So if you registered with us today, to watch the live session, you'll get an email um, including those. If you're watching the YouTube channel, we'll see how much we can actually fit into the description of the YouTube video, um, and we'll do our best to make sure that information is available to you. Okay, we really appreciate everyone joining us today. We value all of you. We value all of you, and we hope that this transition becomes easier with time. Yeah, thanks everyone. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Thank you.